Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, April 22, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Lots of stuff to talk about on the docket today. Let's start the conversation with the title cover of last Thursday's video, which was, are we looking for a low? They traded them down into the end of the week and they bounced them up today. But what was the significance of where they went to by the end of the week? Because we talked about it at least a dozen times. Here's the weekly chart right into the 20 week moving average. It held, they're trying to bounce it off the 20 week moving average. From a big picture perspective, they could bounce it for a few weeks, try and get back to the trend line. Don't know if they get there or not, but I have some ideas of where, quote unquote, we're going to hit them next. Why do I say that? Aha, because here's the likely schematic as far as I'm concerned. Let's say the A leg, which is this leg, is finished as of last Friday. A leg down. B leg up to some retracement area. Maybe it's the trend line. Maybe it's short of the trend line. Maybe it's above the trend line. The B leg is a retracement of a portion of the A leg. And then what happens? They hit them again and make a new low. Pulling the rug out from unsuspecting buyers that were buying the dip because they were told the correction's over and a little more of a bounce, and they will be told that was the correction. Stocks are cheap. Buy in now. There's cash on the sidelines. The list goes on and on and on. It's the same routine over and over and over again. Write this down. Put it on a sticky note. Save it for later. Where would be a good area for them to bounce if they made a new low to find that garden variety resistance area where they would find overhead resistance, stop going higher, and turn around and retreat back in the other direction. What is that magic place? For now, we're going to call it roughly 509 and change up to around 511. We'll split the difference and call it 510, give or take. Might want to write that down, put it on a sticky note. Am I saying they get up there tomorrow? No. There's the rub. But wait, there's more. When they do the thing where they appear to put in a low, like Friday, a bounce today, everybody wants to think there's a low. Whether there is or there is not is irrelevant. One of the things Mrs. Market loves to do is come back sooner than later within the next day or so in this example to retest the low. Sometimes they make a higher low. Sometimes they spike the low and rip it back up in the other direction but likely a test of the low or in the neighborhood of the low is coming. If they spike the low, where are they going? Well, the next obvious place is right around this 100 period moving average and inside the number members and live room members will know that there's an important number down there not having anything to do with the 100 period moving average. So therefore, we'll take heed in that. If they're making a new low, we know where they're going. A higher low could be coming back to fill this gap that was left open Friday. Now it's unfinished business. Since they made an attempt at it this morning, came up short, turned around, and went back in the other direction. It's unfinished business. So if they're coming down here, they're coming to finish some business. And that's where they could, could make a higher low. Write this stuff down. Anybody make money today in the live trading room inside the numbers? I'd like you to post a comment under the video if you did. Let's hear the details. Help a brother out. And I'm not the only brother. The other brothers are, and sisters, are the people that are looking for a solution. They need social evidence. They need peer proof. You're the peers. I can only talk till I'm blue in the face. I can tell you this stuff works. But until they hear from you, they really don't know. They're skeptical because there's too much garbage out there. Help a brother and sister out. Post a comment under the video. How's it going in the live room? What's going on in there? Are you learning? Are you making money? All that stuff. Thank you.
I appreciate your help. How about Nucor? We're taking a detour for a moment. This is from the Lazy Swing Trader Automagical Algo System. This triggered this morning, issued an alert, 188.48. It was off the watch list. Look at that rocket ride immediately. Lazy Swing Trader Automagical Algo System. And just to show you that this isn't necessarily an anomaly like a one-hit wonder, we have another case in point, only this one came up penny short, so the alert didn't go out, but the alert was set to go out. This was on the watch list, 138.91 in Take Two Interactive. And what you can see happened, and let's look at a shorter term chart. You see that right off that number, they ricocheted right off of it, which tells you, it's not me telling you, it's the market telling you that that's an important number. So therefore, no wonder the lazy swing trader automagical algo system picked it up. Swing trade alerts are issued for ones that hit their numbers. We have stop. We have profit targets. We have a watch list. So you know what's coming in advance. You don't have to wait for the alert. You can set yourself up with the entries ahead of time. It's all in there. And by the way, what was the Lazy Swing Trader Automagical System doing last week? It was picking up long side trades. They were hanging around the flat line, up a percent, down a percent here and there. What happened today? Most of them got a pop. That's the way this works. Where were we before? We were short, peeling off the profits. That's the way it works. Back and forth, we play them both ways. Lazy Swing Trader Automagical Algo System. Let's get back to the who made money today in the live room and inside the numbers. Here's the early commentary. Zero dark 30. We got a DCB going, dead cat bounce. Could this be the one that sticks the rip your face off rally? Sure it could. Well, you got a partial rip your face off rally today. Little intraday squeeze opportunity. The pivot is 496.85. How you doing? Did they bounce off the pivot first thing this morning? Here's your five-minute chart. Right of the vertical is today's activity. Did we have traders that took a long trade at the pivot? Yes, we did. Did they get a base hit or more? Yes, they did. Was it a guaranteed win? No, it wasn't, but they understood the risk. We talked through it in the live room. Those that wanted the trade took the trade. We had a bear case below the pivot for Friday's close, 495.10. You saw already before they didn't get there. They came up short. Ripped it back up in the other direction. Did we know where they were going to rip it back up from? Well, let's go find out. We're scrolling up. What I urge you to do is pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double check the work. Early notes, long is above the pivot, short is below the pivot, or at least not long, meaning they can fall. Again, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double check the work. I'm going to highlight or point out a couple of important things. You can do the rest of the work. If you're an intraday trader and you're not using this, I think you're at a disadvantage. Chew on that for a moment. They provided the base hit off the pivot. We got that here. Below 496.50, the door opens for 495.75. All right, well, let's just chew on that for a minute too. Sometimes you just can't make this stuff up. 495.75, they come into it, they find support just under it, and they rip it back up in the other direction, and there's your morning low. So what do we have at 1051? 495.75 down to the gap, just a little bit lower, 495.10 is support and a bounce back in the other direction. So they did not get to 495.10. They spiked this by whatever it was, 10 or 15 cents, and ripped it back up in the other direction. That was the support zone. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double check the work. Guess what? There's more. Let's just cut to the cliff note version. If above 500 on candle closes, the door would open for 502 to 502.65. And here's where this is even more important. I get asked in the live room every day by one of the members, Jory. He says, what's the bull prize today? What's the bear prize today? Guess what the bull prize was? 502 to 502.65. And guess what it was? Overhead resistance. Really? What was the high today? Right in the middle of the zone, 502 to 502.65. That's called a midpoint. I call it the midpoint phenomenon. And that was your overhead resistance. Funny how that works. We had some stocks on the move this morning. Tesla, AU, and Newmont Mining. 
We'll take a look at Tesla and AU. Before we get to that, what was the number today, the daily number for Microsoft given out in the live room? 395.70. Low of day, 395.75. Funny how that works. And there were more. This is just one of several like this during the trading day after the open that comes up that we look at, we trade in the live room. How about Tesla? Guess what? 141.91 was the first number on the board. Stock was trading below in the pre-market. It got below. It opened below. So this number is fictitious. It's off the board. doesn't even exist. What'd they do today? Came into the second number, 139.45. Spiked it. Ripped it. Absolutely ripped it back up in the other direction. Over above 144. $5 rip. Did we have participation in the live room? You bet your bottom dollar we did. Inside the numbers members live room members, all members, not everybody, but many, many members participated in Tesla. AU gave you the deal in the morning from an official standpoint that came up short of the number early in the morning, the second number. Came into the first, went down toward the second, came up short, bounced back, gave you the base hit, came back to the second, bounced around all day, finished right in between them, the midpoint phenomenon. No harm, no foul. Some traders made money. Other traders vacillated around all day, not really doing much. No harm, no foul, or they made money. They officially gave you the base hit here in the morning. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, 192, we talked about 192.50. That held so far. Again, this is still just a dead cap bounce. There's going to be, under likely scenario, a retest of the lows, whether they retest the low in the IWM, come up short, same thing with the spider. It's in the vicinity of, let's pull the rug out a little bit. Let's screw over the Johnny Come Latelys who were buying today, chasing the market in the afternoon. They really have to get screwed, don't you think? Isn't that what the trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew is all about? Like when traders that bought calls today, they wake up tomorrow morning and the calls are negative or the S&P is negative. They know the calls are going to go bad and they say, what the deuce? And it happens over and over and over again. Where can a bounce take you in the IWM regardless of whether they retest the lows or not? 198, 199 is a logical place for now. They get there, we'll start talking about the next place. It will be overhead resistance up there. Transport's a little canary-ish on Friday. They had a bounce on Friday. And what'd they do today? They tested the most recent breakdown candle high in the sequence. They tested it, they spiked it, but they couldn't close above it. First time, best time. Close above that candle, that's bullish into the 200 period moving average, run a test from underneath. That's garden variety type behavior. The Q people, why is 413 on the board? I'm going to show you. We did this one in the live room today. Just to refresh our memory of where it comes from, the market runs up to a place. This is a weekly chart. So the next week, they have a down week. But the fact that the market ran up to that place and got rejected tells you that number up there, whatever that thing is up there, that number, that place, whatever you want to call it, is important. Mrs. Market told us, it's not me telling you, it's not Cousin Jimmy telling you, it's the market telling you. Once they got over that, that becomes a breakout area. What happens with breakout areas? And we do this every day. Markets like to come back and run a test of the most recent breakout area. Intraday, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual, whatever you want to say. All charts act and react the same way. So what they do into Friday's close? They came back to run a test of that place and essentially have bounced off that place. Now, that doesn't have to be the end of the correction. This could be leg A, like we talked about in the SPY. Leg A down to the most recent breakout area. Bounce them, suck them in, make them think the correction's over, and then hit them again. Hence, your ABC corrective pattern. But the financials, another canary-ish type of situation. Why is that? If the financials aren't falling apart, the market's not going to fall apart, Look what they did last week. They bounced them on Friday. They had relative strength. Why would they have relative strength when the market's getting thrown out? Well, guess what? Here we are up today. Another nice day for the financials up over 1% right into the last line of defense in terms of moving averages. Get back above the 20 period moving average. And guess what? You're back to the trend as your friend above all the moving averages. And there you have it. I'd write this stuff down. Put it on a sticky note. What do you think?
Smash Mouth, a little bit of a DCB. We didn't need those other lines. Eclipse or get above the high of this last breakdown candle high in the sequence. The high is 208, and you'll get a bounce back toward these moving averages, the 50 per period moving average. But that's going to be a tall order to get back above 208. Can they? Of course they can, but there's overhead resistance up there. How about gold getting smoked today? Some of the air coming out of the balloon. Obviously, it was quote unquote overbought. They're running away. Let's look at a weekly chart. They're running away. This doesn't last forever. They were at new highs. The trend is your friend. You never know how high they were going to go. That's what I kept saying anytime anyone would ask me about gold, but they will pull back. Pullbacks are meant to be bought. This one will be meant to be bought. Where would I like to buy gold? Notwithstanding the fact that I have no idea right now whether they can get there or not, I would be a buyer anywhere right around 2150 at this point. Let them deflate some more. Let them have a few more days of downside activity. Let the fear factor get sucked out of the market and therefore gold comes down to reality, gets in a corrective pattern. But as long as they stay above this trend line, where does this come from? This was the breakout area, right? They don't have to come all the way down here right now, but this was the ultimate breakout area. So between 2250 and this trend line, 2000, 2050 in that neighborhood, you're going to get support from a big picture perspective in gold. That comment is not to be a trade. The trade will happen numbers, real time, trade alert, discussion in the live room, all that stuff. However, from a big picture perspective, you're looking at 2250 down to the trend line, about 2050, that's your support area. You're likely to get a bounce back in that area. If they stay above this trend line and they start back up, that's going to be a very positive for the next leg higher in gold. Come back below this trend line, party's over for a while, we'll reassess it at the time. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.